Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in this video we will talk about menstrual disorders, specifically amenorrhea, oligomenorrhea, hypermenorrhea and dysmenorrhea. To be able to talk about disorders of menstruation, we will first talk quickly about the physiology of normal menstruation. In the ovaries there are thousands of oocytes, which a girl has from when she was born. At the age of 11 to 14, usually the first menstruation, called menarche, occurs. From then on, every month, one egg develops and is released into the fallopian tube from the ovaries. This usually occurs in the middle of the menstrual cycle. The development of the egg, or oocyte, starts off as a primordial follicle. It then develops into a primary follicle, and then by the help of follicular stimulating hormone, for short FSH, into a secondary follicle, which is characterized by granular cells surrounded by theca cells. Around the oocyte is a layer or wall we call sona pellucida. The granular and tecal cells together produce the hormone estrogen, which signalizes the uterus to prepare the uterine lining which will slug off during menstruation if no fertilization occurred. The mature follicle, also called graphian follicle, is released when LH or luteinizing hormone increases. Luteinizing hormone weakens the wall of the ovary, which results in the oocyte being released. The granular and tica cells remain in the ovary and form what we call corpus luteum, which by LH stimulation produces progesterone. For around 10 days, the corpus luteum produces progesterone to prepare the endometrial lining for implantation. Progesterone also leads to glycogen vacuoles being embedded into the endometrial lining. Progesterone also leads to an increase of the basal temperature. If after 10 days there is no implantation, the corpus luteum stops producing progesterone and it starts degenerating. With progesterone levels declining, the endometrial lining will slug off, so menstruation occurs. This happens around day 1 to 5 of the menstrual cycle. The menstrual cycle is divided into the follicular and luteal phase. Some divide ovulation as the ovulatory phase. Some women experience Mittelschmerz as a unilateral pain indicating ovulation. The fallopian tube has a simple columnar ciliated epithelium to propel the ovum towards the uterus. The menstrual cycle begins with the first day of menstruation and lasts until the last day before the next menses occurs. 28 days is considered standard, but 21 to 35 days is physiological. The length of the follicular phase is then respectively shorter or longer. The average blood loss in one menstruation is around 30 to 40 milliliters, which is around as much as 2 tablespoons, and the normal duration of a menstruation is usually around 5 days. Now we will start to talk about disorders in menstruation. The first one we will talk about is amenorrhea. Amenorrhea is the absence of menstruation. It is physiological before the menarche, so in young girls until around 15 years of age, in pregnancy and after the onset of menopause. Pathological amenorrhea can be divided into two major groups. The first one is if a woman who is over the time in which the first menstruation should have occurred never had a menstruation. Usually the onset of the menarche, so the first menstruation, is between 11 and 14 years. Secondary amenorrhea is defined as the absence of menstruation for at least three months without any of the physiological causes as an explanation and a woman has had a menstruation before. Causes for primary amenorrhea include chromosomal or genetic abnormalities which can prevent the ovaries, hypothalamus, or pituitary gland from functioning as they should. This is for example the case in Turner syndrome, where a woman is missing the second X chromosome in her genotype, or for example in hyperprolactinemia. 
Another cause for primary amenorrhea is when the endometrium sheds from the uterus, but there is an outflow obstruction, so even though the blood is there, the patient will not know that the menstruation occurs. This is for example the case in an imperforate hymen, cervical vaginal agenesis, Meyer Rokitansky Küstner Hauser syndrome, or a transverse vaginal septum. Causes for secondary amenorrhea include endocrine disorders such as polycystic ovarian syndrome, hypothyroidism, hyperprolactinemia, and ovarian failure, as well as neoplasms of the hypothalamus or pituitary gland. For the diagnosis of amenorrhea, usually 4 ml of blood serum is taken, ideally in the morning between 8 and 10 am. The blood will be used to measure many different hormone levels that can indicate that there is some pathology. These hormones include luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, prolactin, and the thyroid hormones TSH, FT3, and FT4. The hormone levels should be checked every six months, and if there is a persistent amenorrhea, a estrogen progesterone substitution therapy can be indicated. In some cases, also chromosome analysis via a cardiogram and a molecular genetic examination can be recommended to find a genetic cause for the amenorrhea. Amenorrhea usually indicates a diminished fertility. Depending on the cause of the amenorrhea, assisted reproduction can be offered to the patient to help with the wish to have children. The next menstrual disorder we will talk about is oligomenorrhea. This is when too little menstruations occur in one year. This can be either when the menstruation occurs regularly, but with too long intervals, usually intervals of 6 to 12 weeks, or that sometimes one menstruation is skipped in the absence of a pregnancy. As we said, the normal length of a menstrual cycle is between 21 and 35 days, and if it is regularly longer than 35 days, we consider it to be oligomenorrhea. Oligomenorrhea is defined as nine or less menstruations in one year. Common causes for oligomenorrhea include obesity, anorexia nervosa, malnutrition, severe stress, excessive exercise, endocrine disorders such as polycystic ovarian syndrome, hyperprolactinemia and hypothyroidism, androgen producing tumors, which can be for example in the ovaries or adrenal glands, and certain medications such as phenothiazines, simetidin and methyldopa. Another cause is the age. In adolescents and in middle-aged women just before menopause, the menstrual cycle is often irregular. Also, after stopping the intake of contraceptives, the hormones of the body have to rebalance and initially oligomenorrhea can be seen. The next disorder we will talk about is hypermenorrhea, also called menorrhagia. In this menstrual disorder, women have a much more heavy menstrual bleeding than normal. As we said, it is normal to lose around 30 to 40 milliliter of blood in one menstruation. In hypermenorrhea, the blood loss in one menstruation is more than 90 milliliter. The opposite of this disorder, hypomenorrhea, would be a blood loss of less than 30 milliliter. Excessive menstruation, but with a regular cycle, can be caused by a variety of causes. The causes are usually divided in painful and painless causes. A painful hypermenorrhea can be caused by fibroids in the uterus. These benign tumors increase the surface area of the uterine cavity and so more endometrium is first formed and then during the menstruation shed. If you want to know more about benign uterine tumors, you can see our video on that in the gynecology playlist. Also malignant endometrial tumors can cause a painless hypermenorrhea. But in this case, the cancer often starts to bleed spontaneously and irregularly, and the bleeding does not usually occur in the same timing as the menstruation, so there will be menometrorrhagia. 
So menometrorrhagia is a term that refers to excessive bleeding in between two menstruations. Painful causes for hypermenorrhea are pelvic inflammatory disease and adenomyosis. Adenomyosis is a condition where endometrial tissue is found in the myometrium, so the muscular layer of the uterus, which lies under the endometrium. If you want to know more about endometriosis and adenomyosis, you can see our video in that in the gynecology playlist as well. Hypermenorrhea can lead to iron deficiency anemia, as a lot of blood is lost regularly. Iron levels should be checked, and if necessary, iron supplementation should be initiated. Also, the underlying cause should be examined if, for example, adenomyosis or uterine tumors, either benign or malignant, are present. Treatment can involve NSAIDs to alleviate the pain. Also, often oral contraceptives or intrauterine devices or other medications to suppress the menstruation are recommended as a first-line treatment to combat the severe blood loss. However, with these medications, it is necessary to inform the patient about the potentially severe and wide-ranging side effects. Some may decide it is beneficial for themselves. A last resort therapy for hypermenorrhea is the surgical removal of the uterus, called hysterectomy. This treatment is sometimes suggested for women who have completed their family planning and in which other treatments were unsuccessful. In case of a benign uterine tumor, a uterine artery embolization can be done to decrease the blood flow to the leiomyoma. Also, a hysteroscopic myomectomy is a treatment option for leiomyomas. The last menstrual disorder we will talk about is dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea is a menstruation with severe pain and cramps. A certain amount of pain is normal during menstruation. But if it is debilitating and interfering with daily activities, it is considered abnormal and so dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea can be divided into primary and secondary. Primary dysmenorrhea is when the menstruation itself causes the severe pain. It usually occurs for the first time shortly after the menarche, so the first menstruation, and lasts until menopause so for the entire duration in which a woman has her menstruation. This is thought to be due to an increase in prostaglandin synthesis that causes painful contractions of the uterus. Prostaglandins can also cause blood perfusion disorder of the myometrium, which can increase the pain. Secondary dysmenorrhea is due to a disorder or change in the female genital tract. Reasons for that are uterine myomas and endometriosis. Dysmenorrhea can also be divided into groups based on the etiology. It can be divided into functional, endocrine, endometrioid, and organic dysmenorrhea. Functional dysmenorrhea is due to increased prostaglandin synthesis in the endometrium. Endocrine dysmenorrhea is due to low periovulatory estrogen levels and low estrogen and progesterone levels in the luteal phase of the menstrual cycle. Endometrioid dysmenorrhea is usually due to endometriosis or adenomyosis and usually occurs in the third and fourth decade of life. Organic dysmenorrhea is due to intramural myomas, adhesions in the uterus due to inflammation or surgeries, cervical changes such as cervical cancer, or anomalies in the formation of the uterus. The main symptom of dysmenorrhea is the severe pain and cramps during menstruation. This is often accompanied by nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and headaches. Treatment depends on the cause of the dysmenorrhea. In secondary dysmenorrhea, the finding and treatment of the cause will usually help. Other treatment options are symptomatic and include analgesics such as NSAIDs, spasmolytics such as butylscopolamine and local heat application. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful and if you like our channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.